So, welcome back. Um, so, I got feedback from the first part of the font tutorial, and uh, thanks to Temez, or Temez, uh, who is, I, I consider him like a moving god, moving god in a sense. He knows his stuff, you know? So, one thing I didn't explain, well, a couple things I didn't explain, was uh, with the proper um, use of this here, with here, this, and uh, color banks, which are this here. Now, uh, let's start off with width since it's the easiest thing. Now, he sent me a flurry of links explaining width, but more or less, uh, width is the number of pixels in between each letter. Okay, so see, by putting 10, I'm putting 10 pixels uh, for every space that is in the character's name. For instance, Kung Fu Man. That's Kung space Fu space Man. Uh, let me write it here just for the hell of it. Kung Fu Man. Now, each of these would be represented by the letter that is um, depicted here. So let's say you got the K right there, and you got the U, the N, and the G. So all these letters will appear fine. Now, what we have here is the space. This space is going to be the width. The width is, as I have it set here, is 10. So there's going to be 10 pixels in between uh, Kung and Fu. Um, now, what I said originally was uh, you make the width the same as your biggest uh, letter, in this case M or W, and that is wrong because it sometimes your M or W or whatever letter can be you know a crazy size and your width can just space your words out too much so by having a set number you can make it look nicer or worse so here's an example I'm gonna set this width to 30 just for the sake of um, example uh, I, I would never really recommend using this for anything Kung Fu Man alright see you can see it there already I mean Look at his name. See how horribly spaced out it is? And yes, that is Flying Kung Fu Man. He floats. Anyways, so yeah. So this is 30 pixels in between. I could probably take a screenshot and count the pixels and show you, but I won't. So, from trial and error earlier, I think 10 works best for me. So I'll show you what 10 looks like. That's Rugal. See, that's 10. So 10 works better for this font that I made. I think the biggest letter has a 13 or 16 or something. Probably 13. Yeah, 13 uh, pixels wide. So I think 10 is the best value for me to use personally. So you would base your width strictly on... Um, how much distance you want between the characters whenever someone presses space in a name. Um, I'm not sure how height works, but I would imagine it's the same way um, for uh, like a victory quote, you know, words on top of words, like in a paragraph or something. I think it works better that way. Now, that's is that. I'm pretty sure Tamez will correct me if I did something wrong for the explanation. But I'll uh, now explain color banks. Now, see color depth here? I leave 256 because it always works for me. I've messed with other values and I just got poop in the end. So let's explain color banks. <clears throat> this is the JG font from Mugen. It is default. It comes with the engine. It's been with the engine for since its existence back in 1999. Now, the way color banks work is on the palette of 256 colors, or 255 if you do not count the first one, which is the alpha color. Every row is 16 blocks, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <clears throat> so each row is 16, and each color bank is one row. For instance, the default font color is gray. This is gray. If I were to use font color 2, it would be red. Font color 3 would be green. Now, it's best I show this in an example, so you get the idea. I have another tutorial I've got to poop out later, so that's going to be interesting. That is horribly big. Okay, so JG font is not here right now, so I shall edit font 9 equals 
jg.fnt. So we'll work on the title screen for now, okay? So we'll use font 9, which is jg. We're going to use color 0. So by default, Mugen's going to show uh, the white or gray, whatever color you want to call this, on it, honestly, up here. Um, that's going to be the default color. And it's going to be facing, uh, it's going to be aligned to the left. That's what that one means. Okay, and when your your active font is what uh, you're currently selecting, that's going to be 9 and 1. So it's going to use the first color in the color bank. So if this works the way I, I imagine it would, um, the fonts are going to be gray, and the active font that you're selecting is going to be red. So let's take a quick gander at this. That's horribly ugly. Hmm, okay, I did something wrong here. Ah, this is what I did wrong. Uh, do there we go. Let's try it again. See, so the fonts are gray, and the actual uh, selected button is colored. That's pretty fancy, huh? Yeah, it's nice. Now let's see. What's the second color in the bank? The second color is green, and the fourth is blue. So I'm going to change the active to the third color, no second, and I'll we'll change the, oh sorry I meant the regular to the, you know what I mean. Anyways, it's going to be green and blue now. See, green and blue. So that's how the color banks work. If you want your fonts to be like this, you should probably color them from bottom to top or top to bottom or left to right, whichever direction you want to be filled into this one row of colors. Your second color will be above, your third is above that, fourth is above that, and shut up you, and so on. So that's how the color banks work. Each row is its own color bank, and you're limited to 16 colors max in one. Okay, now an alternative to this, um, which is if you just make a solid gray font, which is what this is, do, 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 do. So we'll put this back to seven zero. Now, in Mugen 1.0, there is a new feature to color fonts within the engine itself. Now, see, this is the default color for the fonts. They do not have a color bank. See, I'm selecting it, but you can't see it because it's the same color. So I want to make this another color. So this is what I do. I add comma uh, zero comma zero comma zero uh, or in other words where's the other notepad it's gone no okay zero 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 what does that mean that means red green blue more or less the color spectrum so you know you can mix and match these numbers to whatever you want and you'll get the color that you want the number I choose the the number that I choose is zero two fifty six one twenty eight now this is like a green color which you saw at the beginning so looking at this now, you can see the active font turns green. But remember, the font itself is just gray. It has no color banks. This is the Mugen engine coloring the fonts. If you use a gray or a white color, this looks really good. What the hell? Yeah, this looks really good. If you use a font with a color already on it, and then you try to color it again with the engine, it's going to look really horrible. I don't recommend it. So. Uh, to make, to make use of this properly, I recommend using a, a white font or a gray font or uh, a fade from white to gray, you know, something like what this font looks like. Now, let me see. I'm going to open up iDraw and get a color. Okay, these are my Final Fight 3 life bars that I don't really plan to make. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I want the active color to be this color right here. So let's see. Let's see, red 213, green 213, blue 102. Okay. So, 213, 213, 102. Now, when I play this in Mugen, the font should be like a very light goldish color. And there you go. Well, it's an ugly grayish color, but that's mainly because it's mostly dark shades here. But you see, that looks awesome. Now, if only I could remember what colors I had here before. I really don't remember. I think that's it. But yeah, um, so that, that's more or less all I have to explain now. I may do another video if I forget something again. Um, comments below, please and thank you. And I will try.
try to do a um, life bar tutorial now. So thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. And yeah.